These tiny seedlings are packed in nutrition and will run you about $8 for only two to four ounces from the grocery store. I'm going to show you how to grow these fresh, delicious, nutritious greens from the comfort of your own home for only a fraction of the cost that you'd be paying in the supermarket. Hi, I'm Donnie Greens and I've been growing these microgreens commercially for over six years now. And I love it so much that not only am I still running my own microgreens business from here in Huntington, I'm also teaching people across the globe how to start this business themselves and take their lives to the next level just the way I have. So whether you're looking to grow microgreens at home for personal use, maybe for you and your family, or you're trying to start a microgreens business, learning the methods I'm about to show you these will definitely work for you. All right, let's dive right in. So first you're gonna to need to choose your container to grow in. You can grow in a lot of different things. You can cut a milk carton in half, but I'll let you know that the container that you're growing in does play a pretty important role in the quality of the crops you're gonna get and the ease in which you'll have an easy time growing these crops. So what I prefer is a tray that's actually rather shallow because in the beginning when you're first learning, you don't have your climate perfectly dialed in and those shallow trays will allow for more airflow across the base of the crops where you would normally be getting mold problems. Not to mention they're a little bit easier to harvest because you don't have to get down into a deep tray or a milk carton or whatever else you're deciding to use. Also, if you buy crappy trays, they're gonna end up breaking on you over time and this means they're gonna be a cost for you and a liability rather than an asset that you can use over and over again for growing. So if you wanna check out the trays that I love and recommend, I always put links to my best supplies and equipment right down below in the description. So you can check out those trays that I use. Next, you're gonna add your growing medium. Now there's a lot of different options you can use. You can use mats, you can use a potty mix, or you could even use no growing medium at all. But make sure whatever you do choose, make sure it's free from harsh chemicals and definitely free from pathogens as well. So if this was maybe some sort of compost that was made outside where it could have access to, you know, animal in the wild, I wouldn't recommend using that for your microgreens. I would go with something nice and clean and high quality. Now I will mention that microgreens do tend to grow the best in a high quality potting mix. For instance, I use ProMix MP Organic. That way I know it's organic. It comes very clean in a nice bale ready to use and the crops grow extremely well in this growing medium. But any high quality potting mix will definitely do the trick. Growing mediums other than soil, like no growing medium, a screen, a grow mat, the plants are gonna tend to be a little bit thinner and less quality when you're using those growing mediums. Not to mention, they're gonna have a little bit longer growth time. So overall, the best is totally soil, but those other growing mediums do make sense in other situations. For instance, if you're really focused on sustainability right now and you're growing for yourself, maybe you do wanna grow on a reusable growing medium or even no growing medium at all. And maybe you're just growing at home in your kitchen and you wanna keep it really clean and you don't want soil getting everywhere, that's a great opportunity to use a grow mat. But just know the soil is the best, the potting mix. And if you're running a business, you should probably be using a high quality potting mix. Next, you're gonna sow the seeds. Now, what you wanna do is get a nice even spread. You want them to be spread evenly so there's no little clumps. And you also don't want to use too many seeds or too few seeds. I'll also mention that I prefer growing just one seed variety at a time in each tray because each variety is a little bit different. They grow a little bit different and it takes a little bit different timing to grow each of these varieties. So if you have a bunch of different varieties all in one tray, it makes it a little bit more difficult. So I like growing one variety per tray rather than the mixes. Now, as far as those seeding rates go, if you overcrowd your seeds and use too high of a seeding density, you're gonna end up getting wet crops, which is not good. And you're also gonna increase your chances of mold because there's not gonna be enough airflow getting through that plant canopy. And then if you use too little of seeds, for instance, I just had this happen with my sunflowers, I didn't use enough seeds. And what happened is they had a hard time growing because they were all spread out and didn't really get to create that canopy layer that they like. And also I think it helps them stay a little bit warmer as they're going through their germination process. So they like a lot of pals, they like to be hanging out together, but but don't overcrowd them because then they'll get tight. <laughs> Next, you're gonna water your trays that you just made. Now, this is the biggest problem I see is over watering, especially during germination. I'll see some people even putting the soil in, watering the soil, 
then adding the seeds, watering again, it's crazy. You don't need to do all that. You just need to give them enough water to last through the germination process. So once your soil is in the tray, it's a good idea to flatten it out, make a nice even surface to spread those seeds. Then when you give them that watering, just go over the whole tray, make sure to get all the corners and don't get the soil too wet and soggy where it's sitting in wet water. You want it just enough where the soil or growing medium has taken in that water and then it could pass it along to the seeds during the germination process. But if you water too much during this part, you could see a really low germination rate. You could see an increase in mold growth and just overall a slew of problems that will come for you as you start growing these crops. I'll also mention that if you water your soil before you add the seeds, all the seeds are gonna be sticking to the soil rather than bouncing around and spreading evenly. So it's easier to spread the seeds evenly when the soil isn't wet. Not to mention if you're using bigger seeds and you're gonna be spreading those out with your hands, you want the soil to be dry then as well, otherwise it'll be a big mess. So water after you put your seeds in and don't overwater during germination. Next, you're gonna stack your trays for germination. And I stack up to six trays at a time. And then on the top tray, I actually add a weight, like a paving stone, which I bought from Lowe's. Now these are like 14 pounds. They seem really heavy, but this is actually really important for the germination process. What the weight is gonna do, it's gonna help the plants push their roots down to the soil so they can really get rooted and situated in there. And it's also gonna put pressure on the plants so they have to grow up nice and strong, take in water, and they're gonna get just really strong in the beginning phases of its growth cycle. Now, one thing I'll mention here as well, because I see a lot of people doing it is doing a blackout phase where you actually flip the tray upside down and put it over your trays. Now, I don't like this because one, you're uncovering during germination and exposing those seeds to any mold spores that can be in the air. And then right after that, you're putting this upside down tray and creating a perfect high humidity environment for mold to grow. Now, some people are doing this to stretch the crops, but you can get away with stretching crops by using just one light on your grow racks. So I highly recommend staying away from doing any sort of doming upside down or doing that blackout phase, I recommend just stacking your trays and not peaking until the end of germination. This is another thing I see is people watering their crops, whether it's spraying a mist or even doing a full on watering during their germination process, lifting up trays and watering every day. You don't wanna do that. You wanna leave them alone, don't disturb them, and you don't wanna be opening up the tray and introducing outside mold spores into that tray as they're germinating. So just stack them and let them be during the germination process, that's it. After germination, the plants are gonna show you that they're ready to go under lights because you're gonna see those trays starting to separate. Those plants are gonna be pushing up on the trays and weight above. So at that point, you're gonna take them out of germination and put them under lights. This is also when you're gonna give them that first watering under lights because the only water they've had so far is when you first made that tray. They've been sitting in germination, soaking in that water, and now they're ready for that next water as you put them out under lights. Now, since microgreens are very young plants, they actually don't need that much light. So you can grow them on a windowsill, you can grow them outside if you want, grow them in a greenhouse. But what I do is I just grow them on a rack and I just mount one single grow light underneath there and they tend to grow really well with just that one high quality full spectrum light. Now, light is important. Plants need the light, that's how they take in energy and all that. So if you didn't end up putting light on your crops, what would happen is they would start getting really tall and leggy, they would look really wonky and tall and thin, and they actually would stay yellow because they wouldn't be developing their plant pigments or their chlorophyll, which is actually what turns them green. So definitely use light. You don't want your crops to look all weird and wonky, you want them to look beautiful and healthy. Not to mention that green color and that chlorophyll is really healthy for the human body. And that green chlorophyll color is actually really similar molecularly to what our blood and the hemoglobin in our blood, what turns that red. So really good for our blood, really good nutritionally. Make sure your plants are nice and healthy and green. Next, you're just gonna water daily. I water once a day in the morning, every single day, as long as these plants are under lights growing. The first watering, like I mentioned, after they come out of germination, when they first go under lights, I typically do a top water, not necessarily, the reason why I do that is just to get a full saturation through the whole growing medium. I can get all the corners really well. Um, rather with the bottom watering, you don't have as much control. So I do a top watering for the first water right when they go under lights after germination. And then every day after that, in the morning, I give them a bottom water where I separate the trays and add water underneath and they soak up that water. So it's very important, again, not to be over watering. You don't want your trays to be sitting and soggy in a very damp, wet, soggy growing medium. You just want that potting mix or whatever growing 
primary medium you're growing in to be holding the amount of water that it can actually hold and not sitting in excess water. And this watering is probably the number one most important skill you wanna develop right in the beginning because these overwatering problems can lead to mold, it can lead to bad growth, wet crops, all sorts of bad things. So make sure you're dialing in your watering and figuring that out as soon as humanly possible. Next, you're gonna harvest. Depending on the variety, these crops, these microgreen crops are ready in about seven to 14 days. Some are a little longer, some are a little shorter, but overall they go really fast, which is very exciting. Now you wanna harvest these crops, not with a scissor, but with a knife, a nice sharp knife, because what a scissor does is, is, is it can pinch the crops. It can pinch the base of the stem where you're harvesting it. And that pinch is gonna result in that crop starting to rot from that point up into the crop. So you don't want them to be pinched and starting to rot. You want a nice clean cut with a knife. And actually, I've even seen some of these crops start to put out roots from where I've cut them if you've got a really clean cut. So that's very important to use a knife rather than something like scissors because you don't wanna be pinching those stems. Also, I'll mention, you don't really wanna be washing these microgreens. I see certain companies washing them, I see some not. Now, it's really important from my perspective to not wash these crops. One, you wanna keep them dry because dry crops are gonna last longer, they're gonna be a higher quality. And if you get them wet, they're just gonna go bad a lot quicker in the fridge. Not to mention, you're adding another process and you wanna be keeping it simple. Why wash them and add another process, more labor and cost if you don't have to, right? Now, now I'll also mention that when you're washing your crops, you're getting closer to a ready to eat food, which is taxed and it's more heavily regulated. When you're not washing these crops, it's closer to a raw agricultural product that is much less regulated and not taxed. Also, as far as the tax stuff goes, I'm not a legal professional, so be sure to check on your local tax rates and all that good stuff because it does differ from county to county and state to state. So there you have it, a step-by-step -step guide on how to grow microgreens along with a bunch of stuff not to do as well. If you're looking to make this entire process more simple, learn the best methods of growing hands-on and literally have me guiding you through the process day by day so you can become a master grower in only 10 days, I highly recommend checking out the One Tray Away Challenge. I'll link it below in the description or you could simply go to onetrayaway.com. So go check out that challenge and I'll see you in there.